Hello, this is Jason with FLIR Systems. Today we're going to be testing the FLIR A615 infrared camera with Cognex Vision Pro software. To begin our demonstration, we're going to look at the GigaVision configuration tool from Cognex. What this tool allows us to do is to search the network for GigaVision cameras and also set the IP address for GigaVision cameras on the network. So you can see that we found a FLIR systems camera. We see the IP address of our computer. We also see the IP address of the camera. If you want to change the IP address, you can simply update the IP address with the built-in tool and the GigaVision configuration tool. Another nice feature is the show feature snapshot. What this does is it gives you a quick snapshot of all the GiniCam attributes in a GigaVision camera. So you have a single source where you can pull in all the attributes that are listed in the XML file of a GigaVision camera. So for the A615 that we are using, you can see the extensive list of exposed attributes which are all well documented in the FLIR GiniCam ICD manual. So now we're going to go to Vision Pro and show you an example using a FLIR A615 camera with Vision Pro software. One of the easiest ways to take a look at a camera is go directly to the image source. You can pull up a camera directly just like we did in the GigaVision configuration tool and you see a FLIR systems GigaVision camera. Under video format there are several to choose from but if you want radiometric infrared video then mono 16 is the only choice you can initialize acquisition you can now see the image properties this is a 640 by 480 array gray 16 pixel format and there are several custom properties that you would want to pay attention to all of these properties are listed in the FLIR GiniCam ICD manual under camera control you can control focus position, speed, direction. You can also control the nuke action and mode or non-uniformity correction, which is a physical function of a FLIR infrared camera. You can control autofocus and control the autofocus method. Current case is the temperature ranges that are available in the camera. To know what temperature ranges are available, you would use the query case command. Under the image stream control, IR format is where you would choose your temperature linear data stream, which gives you temperature per pixel in Kelvin. Also, a very important feature of infrared cameras is for the camera to calculate temperature, you must input all of the object parameters. Most importantly, there is object emissivity, reflected temperature, as well as distance to target, relative humidity, as well as atmospheric temperature. If you have the camera in enclosure, you would also want to know the external optics transmission. Now today we have prepared for you a quick build application. So we're going to go and open that now. And here we have one put together for the FLIR A615 camera. Let's open up this quick build application. We've also put together an A615 PC board inspection. So taking a quick look here, you can now see, I'm going to acquire an image, and we have a image that is uh, doesn't look very good right now. Remember we're grabbing a 16-bit monochrome and we're trying to display it as 8-bit. Now the first thing that we've done is we have used a COG pixel map tool and this COG pixel map tool allows us to convert 16-bit data to 8-bit data. So it will aid in our, in our image analysis. Using the COG tool, we go to take a look at the output image of the COG tool and since we have already adjusted our reference points, you could use the histogram here to, to manually set your points or now that we are using a temperature linear output from the from the camera you can just set your absolute input points these are the 16 bit data points from the camera and how you're going to convert them to 8-bit 
So this number, 31, 3,130 counts, is really temperature in Kelvin with single point precision. So 3,130 is really 313.0 Kelvin or convert it over to 30 degrees Celsius. Same thing here. 3,250 counts is really 325.0 Kelvin or you could convert that to C or F. And you can adjust these as needed. Now on the output side for 8 bits we want to go ahead and use all of our 8 bits and we can manually input our data to get that linear scale taken care of. Now that we have our 8-bit conversion set up. We can now pull that up on the screen. And moving along to some video analysis tools, a very nice tool to go with next would be a COG blob tool. And we have a COG blob image here to take a look at. And now you can see some blobs that we have captured on the screen. And we want to take a look at the COG blob tool. And there are some nice parameters that you can set and control on here so you can see exactly what thresholds that you want to use to do blob analysis. So here we want to set the minimum area that we want to grab. So we can set that to fill and 500 is a good number to go with here. We can then set the uh, threshold so that we can see what blobs are available on our output image. So as we adjust the size and as we adjust our threshold for, temp for our 8-bit linear value on our temperature, we can find a blob area that we want to see. So we've set our threshold, we've selected our blob, and based upon our blob you can also see several data points that are available in the results table. So we found one blob of a given area, center mass for X and Y, so that you know where your blob is and how large it is. But what's really important about this blob analysis that we are doing here is not only the blob analysis, but we want to know what the temperature value is for a given region of interest. And this is where we come up with a very nice tool where we can see the results of where our blob analysis is. So now we get the minimum pixel within the blob, the maximum, as well as the average and other mathematical functions as well. Now remember the 16-bit pixel values are temperature per pixel in Kelvin with an extra decimal point. So the first thing you need to do with these numbers is divide by 10 to enter your decimal point. So this number 3198 is really 319.8 Kelvin of a minimum measured value and 326.4 of a maximum measured value in Kelvin. You could then convert that to C or F. So the temperature linear data output of a FLIR camera is what makes it truly plug and play with Vision Pro software. You simply add in the object parameter values for your given camera let the FLIR camera calculate the measured temperature values and display that on your 2D 16-bit video output from the camera. That concludes our test for today. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.